What's up guys? Welcome back to The Home Slice. Some of you guys will have been following along recently as I have been doing a bit of testing of strops. This is the last video for now in that series. I'll have some future videos where I actually load up full-size strops and compare the results of them. But before I do that, I want to get through all the different options that I can think of with the gear that I have and compare some objective results. Now I've sharpened all these knives with, they're all Victorinox, they're all the same steel heat treat, similar thickness behind the edge. This one hit 162, this one hit 155, this one hit 154 on the best, and this one hit 134, so got a little bit uh, keener than the rest. <clears throat> They've all been sharpened on Spyderco Ultra Fine because I find that the Spyderco Ultra Fine, because it's an adhesive uh, wearing stone, it generally generates less damage under the surface of the metal and at the apex than some of the other stones. So, but it also tends to leave a really aggressive, sometimes foil burr at the edge. So it's a good one to test strops with because you, you'll be able to tell fairly evenly whether they remove some burr, but also the results won't be tainted by there being a lot of damage or excessive amount of moved metal and burr. In this test, I'm gonna be incorporating some things I learned in past tests. In some of the past tests, at least with my stropping technique, I have been finding that around 10 strokes really shows you the effect of the strop. If you go more than that, like 15, then if you're abrasive, uh, 15 strokes on each side, then if your abrasive is really hard like diamond, there can be this effect, at least with my stropping technique, where the best number actually goes back up because you formed a bit of foil burr and I found that out by doing that and then seeing the number drop pretty dramatically when I put it on the rough side of an unloaded kangaroo strop, it seemed to strip a little bit of foil burr off. So anyway, I'm going, I have eight strops to test and four knives. These four are Mother's Mag Polish, Gunny Juice, 0 0.1 Micron, Venive, um, <clears throat> 1 Micron Diamond Paste, and CBN, Venive CBN, 2 Micron Paste. And then we have Plain Chromium Oxide here, and Chromium Oxide mixed with the 0.1 Micron Gunny Juice. Chromium Oxide mixed with the Veneve 1 Micron paste, and Chromium Oxide mixed with the 2 Micron CBN paste. Last time we did the Chromium Oxide as a first step for deburring, and we had pretty good results with that. I'm curious today what will happen if we take the non-Chromium Oxide pastes first and then try to refine on the chromium oxide pastes and if any of the best numbers are made worse than what they currently are, I'll just reset them on the Spyderco Ultrafine so the test is a bit more fair. Now you may be wondering, like Gabe, do you realize this is stupid? Like you shouldn't be stropping on things that are like this big. <laughs> and yes, Gabe does realize that this is kind of dumb. But the thing is, is I wanted to test on kangaroo leather because that's what I will be loading a lot of these compounds onto. And do you realize, stupid as this may be, <laughs> how difficult it can be at times to get a hold of kangaroo leather when you live in rural New Zealand? So anyway, I took one little piece of kangaroo leather that I decided I could spare because I want to save the rest to make some flat and hanging strops. And I was like, how many compounds and combinations do I want to test? And there were eight, and so I cut that one into eight. So yes, I realize this is ridiculous. Yes, I realize that the information that we glean from this will be very broad strokes, but this is just intended. It's not intended to be scientific. It, honestly, it's not intended to be a critique on whether your stropping technique is the best. Your technique will be different. This is simply me trying to figure out of the things I have and the skill level that I'm at currently what works best so that I can load up some other strops that are full size and then hopefully get really good results, especially considering these are steel without a lot of carbide. We can observe what these strops do to steel itself. 
Anyway, that's kind of a long intro, but I figured I should give some direction to this series since it's now become like a six or seven part series. And I haven't fully explained what I'm trying to observe. So there it is. I'll get set up and then we'll jump into the test and I hope you enjoy it. Here we go, starting out with the red knife with Mother's Mag on kangaroo leather. I guess the big question here is, is Mother's Mag as efficient on leather as it is on denim? On denim, we saw a 96 gram reduction. And indeed, here we see less. I should mention that I'm hitting the ones that tested with the highest, best reading, and therefore probably the biggest amount of deburring needed with the largest abrasives and I'm hitting the ones with the lowest BESS with the smallest abrasives just to sort of optimize the test because I think that's what the different abrasives will be most useful for. Next in our testing lineup is some 2 micron CBN paste from Veneve. I've had good results from this on stiffer straps and not so good on more compressive or flexible straps. I'm not sure how the Rue leather will respond. And indeed, it's not a very good result. We see an increase, and it kind of holds up with the pattern. Next up is the 1 micron Veneve diamond. No chromium oxide, just the diamond here on kangaroo leather. Will this hold the pattern of diamond so far? Indeed it does, 162 grams. And it would appear that one may need a stiffer strap as well. Anyway, on to gunny juice on kangaroo leather. Gunny juice, for me, at least this 0.1 micron stuff, has been more forgiving on compressible straps. A little bit of best problems there, but we find that that has dropped to 100 grams, and the pattern holds there as well. But with these really, really small, high-quality abrasives in gunny juice, you can actually get good results on compressible or stiff substrates. Right now, I'm resetting the edges on Spyderco Ultrafine, just on the ones that performed very poorly, and we'll retest those to see where the new ratings fall. The green knife has hit 213, which is not great, but we're going to roll with it because the video is rolling, and the orange knife has hit 170 grams. These are our new updated best readings overall. And we'll be starting off our lineup with the chromium oxide with this red knife. It was started at 129, and we're going to see if we can decrease that number with pure chromium oxide. We failed to do so on the leather strop, which is interesting. Both the softer abrasives without the harder abrasives mixed in seem not to have as much of a beneficial refining effect in this kangaroo leather. Let's check out CBN mixed with chromium oxide. 127, a decent decrease of 43 grams. Onto chromium oxide with one micron Veneve. This combination in particular did fairly well on the denim with reducing the number. But let's find out how we're doing on kangaroo leather. Coming in at a reading of 139 from that high 213, which is a good result. Finally, we've got the gunny juice mixed with the kangaroo leather to see if gunny juice and all its wonders can pull that number down lower than 100 grams, which is already quite keen. And we find that the gunny juice mixed with chromium oxide hits a rating of 95 grams. Okay, 95 is really good for chromium oxide and gunny juice. Um, I think because I'm just curious, um, I'm going to hit <clears throat> all of these on the hanging kangaroo strop really gently, probably just like three strokes or so to see if any of them deburr a bit more fully. So if you're really interested, you can stick around. This is kind of like the after test to the test, but... I'll do that real quick and then we'll come back and test all four and then I'll say sayonara to you guys for now. Okay, this guy was at 156 before the Rue. 
we'll go real slow and just make sure we get oh man. 122 that's better power of kangaroo guys unloaded kangaroo hanging strap I'm a believer these days if you uh, don't know where to find kangaroo tail or it seems too expensive in the US there's sometimes sellers on eBay that will ship it over from Australia been getting really good results from it lately. Gentle stropping. I'll do a tutorial at some point to teach you guys how to strop on kangaroo because my technique has changed a bit. This one was at 127. 159. So interestingly, that one didn't improve. And that's interesting because that one was only stropped once. I think I've been finding that if you go through a couple short steps of stropping and it's a little more fully deburred, that the kangaroo has a better effect. So that sort of confirms that somewhat. Okay, let's do the green one next. This one was at 139. I'll take it real slow. This one was at 139 off of the chromium oxide paste and Veneve 1 micron diamond. One sixty five. Funny edges not being improved after I talk about how they should be improved off of kangaroo leather. Just proving me wrong here. So apparently not always, but anyway, I do often get my best final results after a few careful steps of stropping and then touch up on hanging kangaroo. All right, this one was registering at 95. We're gonna have to go really slow to get an accurate read on this. Here we go. So it's reading as 102 now. now which is not quite as good but it's been 195 102 very consistent results for gunny juice with and without chromium oxide paste bad results for the kangaroo strop when they've only gone through one step because this that these edges were reset that did poorly both of them and then a definite reduction in sorry my phone is going crazy and then a definite reduction um, in best number or at least a holding steady with the kangaroo if they've been through two steps. Very interesting. So what's next? Um, next for this uh, strop series, I'm just going to spreadsheet all this data. I'm not going to necessarily choose which compounds and materials to use just by what got the lowest best number but where we saw the largest reductions in best number because I think the proof is in the pudding there of what's deburring most effectively. I will also take into account the things that got under 100 best or to about 100 best because 100 best with conventional steel like this is sort of like your sweet spot in terms of being completely and fully deburred at that point, which is hard to do with Victorian ox knives that don't have a lot of carbon, very pliable steel, and probably like 56 or so Rockwell, very difficult to do. So very, very good results on this pink knife with the plain gunny juice, very good result. Chromium oxide with gunny juice, very good result. Kangaroo strop, very good result. So those will definitely be coming into play. 
but we'll have to, I'll have to look over the data overall and see where we saw the biggest gains and the lowest numbers. And then I'll probably do an update about which compounds and materials I'm focusing on for future videos. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see the previous video, the video before this, where I was messing around with some denim stropping with some chromium oxide paste, you can check that out. It's on screen now. Otherwise, I hope you have a good one, and I'll just say peace out from the home slice. Bye.